Okay, today I'm going to be testing if you can boil an egg just by dropping it. So when you drop a ball on the ground, you notice that it starts out high, and then as it bounces, it gets lower and lower and lower until it eventually stops. But why does it do that? Why does it start out high and then get lower? So the theory is that when a ball drops, the energy that it used to have by you lifting it in the air finally gets converted to heat of the ball and heat of the environment. But can you actually measure that? That's what I'm going to attempt to do today. But instead of using a ping pong ball, I'm going to be using a little tiny ball. And not just one, but thousands of them. So what I'm going to do is be testing out if I drop these balls a lot of times, can I actually measure an increase in temperature? Is it true that the potential energy that you give something when you drop it does really get converted into heat? Okay, so I have here a bag of lead shot. So the reason I'm using lead is because lead has a very low heat capacity. And that means that it doesn't take a lot of energy to change the temperature of the lead. Okay, so first let's measure the temperature of our lead shot right now. So we've got about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 15 and a half degrees Celsius. So now let's toss this on the ground and see if we can actually heat it up just by dropping it. Okay, so I have my bag of lead here. I'm gonna put it in a stronger bag here so it doesn't just split open and I lose my lead shot. So I'm going to throw this bag on the ground over and over and over again. And every time I pick it up, I'm giving the bag of lead more potential energy. So let's give it some drops. This is actually an exercise I made up called the First Law of Thermodynamics Kinetic Exercise. Okay, let's see if it heated up at all. Okay, so my bag broke open, but let's pour the lead in here. Let's measure its temperature. 63, what <laughs> increased? 64. 65 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a five degree increase just by dropping it on the ground a bunch of times. That's crazy. So I wonder how high it could get if I just keep dropping it over and over and over again. Okay, here goes 100 drops raised over my head. Let's see how high the temperature increases. My arm's starting to burn. Left arm. Okay, let's see how hot that got. Definitely got me hot. Here. Okay, stick it in. What do we got? Better be a big increase. That was a lot of work. So we got over 65. Okay, so I'm gonna say about 73 degrees Fahrenheit. So it, went, so it went from 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 73. So an eight degree temperature difference here. Let's quickly see how much energy that actually means went into this. Okay, we have 1,520 grams, so 1.5 kilos. Okay, so now all we need to do to calculate how much heat we added to it is just to use the specific heat of lead. So the specific heat of lead is 0.125 joules per gram Celsius. So all we have to do now is multiply the specific heat by the mass of our lead here and the change in temperature, which was about eight degrees Fahrenheit or about 4.45 degrees Celsius. So that gives me 834 joules of energy. And let's compare that to how much energy I put into the bag. So every time I lifted this up off the ground, I lifted it up about 72 inches. The energy it takes to do that is around 26.8 joules. And I did that 100 times, so it took 2,688 joules to do that. But I only saw about a third of that come out as heat. So where did the other energy go? Well, when it hit the ground, it wasn't just the shot being impacted, but the ground itself. So the ground itself was heating up too. So we lost a lot of energy to the ground also. 
And the bag that I had it in, it wasn't completely insulated, so I lost a lot of heat to the environment. So now back to the original question, could you cook an egg just by dropping it? So if you use the specific heat of an egg, you can figure out how much energy it takes to just heat an egg up to boiling temperature. And that's around 16,200 joules. And then once you have it at that boiling temperature, you have to add additional energy to just denature the protein or to cook it. So it takes energy to restructure the proteins in there and cook it. So you can figure out how much energy it takes to cook the egg by using something called the heat of denaturization. So how much heat does it take to cook this protein? And the specific protein in egg is called albumin. And so the heat required to cook albumin is around 12 joules per gram. So for about a 60 gram egg, it takes around 730 joules. So most of the energy comes from just heating up the egg not from the actual cooking process. So adding those two heats together, it gets us to around 17,000 joules or 17 kilojoules of energy needed to cook the egg. So in order to give it that much potential energy, you'd have to drop it from 30 meters high 100 times or drop it one time from three kilometers high because most of the energy would go to splattering the egg and spraying it everywhere and you would lose the heat of the egg to the environment. So your best bet for cooking an egg by dropping it is just by dropping it from very high up so that its velocity when falling to the earth gets high enough so that it compresses the air around it and heats it up enough to cook it. So unfortunately, I don't think it's possible to cook an egg just by dropping it. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're not subscribed yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video comes out. And if you have any questions about this video or any comments or suggestions for me, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. Thanks for watching again and I'll see you next time.